Well, it's curious, it's around this time, actually, when he was still governor of New York, that little story is told about him, and told about some of his abilities and some of his drives and passions. That story is told by the journalist Jacob Rees. Jacob Rees was visiting Roosevelt at the governor's mansion in New York, and Roosevelt was down in the basement getting his morning shave. And Reese said he came in, Roosevelt was receiving a shave, and he witnessed something rather incredible. First of all, he saw that Roosevelt was writing, but he wasn't just writing with one hand, he was actually writing with two hands. In other words, he had two different letters on two different desks, a hand was writing each at the same time, and the two letters, which were to two different people, were actually being written in two different languages about two different topics. Now, that alone, of course, is astounding and is an incredible ability, but that wasn't all. Around Roosevelt's barber chair, there were four secretaries, and Roosevelt, in between writing and receiving his shave, was dictating a paragraph or a point at a time to each of his four secretaries. One, he was dictating a biography of Oliver Cromwell to. One, he was giving a speech that he would deliver later that afternoon. One, he was giving the legislative agenda and having him record his thoughts on that. And to another, he was playing the staff picnic with. That was Teddy Roosevelt. That was why the Republican Party, in many ways, even though it was his party, feared that he would be too effective against corruption and might actually get rid of many of them. And so they put him into the position of vice president. However, no one could anticipate that in September of 1901, an anarchist would assassinate President McKinley and Roosevelt himself would become president. It was as president that he continued doing what he had always done. He read. He often kept a table of some 15 to 20 books open. He often kept up his physical exercises. In fact, there are stories told about how he moved from a boxing match in the basement of the White House to then meeting immediately afterwards, I'm sure he got cleaned up in between, to the Minister of Japan discussing their various affairs. It was during his reign as president that he was able to uh, grant equal pay to all federal workers who were both men and women. Before this, women were often paid less than men simply because they were women. It was also as president that he negotiated peace between Russia and Japan, who were fighting a terrible war against each other. This actually earned him the Nobel Peace Prize. He also created several national parks and several national forests. And who can forget, of course, the fact that it was Teddy Roosevelt who really got the whole project of the Panama Canal moving forward and ultimately finished. But perhaps what's most incredible about him is that throughout all of his presidency and all of his two terms in office, his reign or his rule was largely free of wars and conflicts. A lot of that had to do with the fact that his motto was, speak softly and carry a big stick. In other words, be willing to speak with diplomacy. Don't go immediately to war. Don't go immediately to your biggest weapon. Have them ready. Have them waiting should you need them. But that should be your absolute last resort. He really was a man who thought in terms of reformation. Eventually, he would retire from the presidency and would go off hunting and go off on several expeditions. But in 1912, seeing the corruption of his own party, he decided once again to run for the office. Only this time, he didn't run as a Republican, and he certainly didn't run as a Democrat. He decided to create his own party. Uh, eventually, not having a name yet for the party, at least an official name, that is, he, uh, there's a curious incident told about him, in which he was going to deliver a speech on his way to Milwaukee in Wisconsin. And on his way there, he was actually shot. And the bullet entered into his chest. And Roosevelt was a rather muscular man. He had really trained his chest muscles to help him breathe properly and overcome asthma from a young age. Uh, the bullet actually lodged itself in muscle and did not harm any of his organs. But he did, of course, bleed profusely. And you can imagine he would have been in intense pain. Well, of course, all of his aides were like, all right, let's get you to the hospital. And Roosevelt said, no, I'm fine. I feel as fit as a bull moose which of course became the name of his party, the Bull Moose Party, which itself is amazing. 
Anyway, he went on to deliver the speech. It was there that he got up at the podium and he seemed to be rather ill or people thought that something was wrong with him. So he eventually said, I've been shot. Once the people said, oh, he's been shot and probably wondered why he was still giving a speech and thought he was insane, he went on to give an hour and a half long speech in which he outlined his 10 points that were based upon the 10 commandments. He then finished the speech, went to the hospital, had the bullet removed, and recovered. Now, he would not win the election. Instead, uh, when he lost the election, he went with his son down to the Amazon. There he discovered a river, which is named after himself, rather remarkably. But when he returned, with World War I uh, breaking out, Roosevelt very quickly called for Americans to volunteer to defend what he saw as the democracies and the republics of Europe. He, of course, was ignored in this. Wilson was trying to keep us out of war entirely, but it would bring us into the war later. Still, Roosevelt decided that he would once again raise soldiers, so he tried to raise his old Rough Riders to go into battle again, but was denied because he was really rather old by this time. Still, many of his sons would serve. In fact, his son Quentin would die in this terrible conflict. After the war, Roosevelt would spend the last months of his life fighting against many of the plans of Woodrow Wilson at Versailles to impose the League of Nations and to try to make the world more advantageous for countries like America and England, but at the expense of Germany. Roosevelt, kind of like Churchill, believed that all the actions that we committed at Versailles would cause another war to occur in a 20 years time. They, of course, were both right. That was World War II, and it grew out of what happened at Versailles. But Roosevelt, who fought against these things successfully in some ways, along with his friend Henry Cabot Lodge, did not really live long enough to see any of those things happen, for he died in the year 1919. <laughs>